Welcome back. This week we get to tie everything together in this stern modification project and do like the biggest lamination that will happen uh, in this area of the boat and that is tying the deck to the whole side to the transom and I have to do it twice once on each side obviously and so it's a big deal because it's kind of the last big project to do on the stern modification and from here on out it's a lot of detail work and I get to start thinking about moving on to other parts of the boat. Apart from that we're also going to give you a little tour of my honey which is a little 18 foot race boat that I built a while back and lastly we're going to start we're starting to add up all the weight that we've been putting into and out of the boat so at the end of the episode we're going to do a little game and uh, get you involved so Thank you again very, very much for watching. We really appreciate all your support. And so enjoy the episode. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat into a comfortable cruising home. After all the parts like the deck and the transom are glued together, I could go and trim around the shear, which is where the deck meets the hole, to get ready to lay glass over these corners. I sanded the edges down flush and then routed in a radius to the edge. The radius is about half an inch, big enough for glass, fiberglass to lay smoothly over without making a void. It's hard to bend glass over or into a tight corner. I sanded over the entire area to get rid of any burrs and smooth areas, cleaned it up and it was ready to laminate. First, I needed to put in a couple extra skins on the inside and outside of the transom ear. I could have done this before I glued them into the boat, but I wanted that skin on the outside to wrap onto the deck and hull sides to make it a bit stronger. I'm adding two layers of 17 ounce biax the outside and wrapping them onto the hole and deck and putting a vacuum bag onto it. The vacuum bag achieves a couple things. First, it compresses the glass down to be a thinner than hand laid glass. It also presses out excess resin. An ideal resin to glass ratio is one to one. With a hand layup, I think a good ratio is more like 60 to 65% resin to 40 or 35% fiberglass. Getting less resin in the matrix obviously makes the part lighter, but it also makes it a bit less brittle. And lastly, it will help pull out any excess air that was trapped during the layup. And overall, there's a more, it makes a more consistent layup because there is consistent pressure across the entire part. How's it look? It looks excellent. It looks really, really nice. Really smooth, no, not too many wrinkles. Solid now. This morning, uh, we are going to laminate the other side of the cockpit extension that we've done it's gonna we're gonna tie the whole thing together oh it's actually gonna be on that side 
my old friend Somerset came to visit this weekend and he's gonna give me a hand. Somerset and I went to college together, we were roommates. We learned to sail together, traveled a lot together. And so. Tell us a little bit about your uh, Nicaragua adventure. Um, when we were in college together, Matt sailed down the coast and kind of started a charter in Nicaragua um, that our friend Zach and I and our friend Wesley all kind of like slowly migrated down there and like took turns kind of helping with this business. Um, and yeah, it was a really cool adventure. It started on, what kind of boat was it? It started on a uh, Newport 30 that a friend, of, we met a guy sailing down the coast and he was taking his Newport 30 down to Nicaragua. He was gonna start a, another business there and he wanted to put his boat into charter. And so, yeah, we uh, started doing booze cruises basically. Yeah, and eventually we worked up to a really cool catamaran and yeah. yeah. And it was there for like 10 years. Yeah. but. <laughs> that's, a funny, funny place and awesome. It was awesome to to get to know the area and stuff. So yeah, fun traveling there. You guys have had a lot of adventures together. You've done deliveries to French Polynesia and Alaska and yeah, yeah. yeah we've gone, we've done the Atlantic, the Pacific, all over the place. Yeah. South Pacific. Matt taught me how to sail. He took me sailing the first time. I think we ran aground the first time, right? Yep. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that on the jalopy? Yeah, we had a, a Cal T227, it was 1968, that we called the jalopy. And it was like gifted to us from people that had graduated school already. And we just left it on a mooring out off of the Evergreen Beach. And we just, whenever we had an opportunity, go out. And I took Salty out for the first time on that boat. and. It was really, really low tide, as I recall. Yeah. And we hit the bottom a few times. But Yeah. Yeah. And Salty, what do you do in Seattle? I work on boats. So I work out of Shoal Shoal Marina um, and fix boats and teach sailing and just do boat stuff. Okay. Yeah. Let's be honest with our audience because you guys share a very, um, you share something in common. You both love something. I think you know what I'm talking about. Ween? I don't love Ween. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to Ween with Matt. Cat videos? Cat videos. Oh, cat videos. Oh. <laughs> it's true. So, uh, so Somerset and Matt are on a daily basis texting back and forth funny cat videos. And I always know because Matt is constantly giggling at his phone. Oh, yeah. And every single time it is some cat video that's that Somerset has sent him. Well, it's a competition because Matt refuses to get on TikTok. <laughs> uh, and I insist that the TikTok cat videos are, are better than his Instagram cat videos. They're so all cat videos. It's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Ready. Let's do it. and two layers on the side here so there will be we're gonna put two layers two more layers on now so there'll be four total all over this thing
gonna go make uh, biscuits and gravy for brunch. How many more layers do you have? Uh, just one more. And then we'll put it back and back on it. Okay. This is the honey. I built this boat about 10 years ago in the back of a boatyard in Seattle that I used to work at. The design is an I-550, which I found online. It was highlighted on, a, on Sailing Anarchy, and I thought it was super cool. There was also a fleet of them being built in Portland, and so I wanted something that I could both maybe do a little bit of camping with and also do some fleet racing, one design racing. The construction is all Okume quarter inch plywood, six millimeter plywood and carbon and epoxy. It's a stitching glue style construction, so you basically make five parts, which is the whole sides, the bottom, the transom, and the stem, and you zip tie the whole, all the parts together, and then you glue them and tape them with, with carbon tapes, is what I chose to use. It, it wasn't necessary. Well, I finished the boat in about 18 months. It was just a couple months to get the hull together with all the bulkheads and the deck on. A few months of fairing and painting, which took a, a real long time. I was very meticulous about it, which was a little unnecessary, but it has a great paint job. And then finishing it, getting the foils done, getting all the rigging done, took probably a year. The keel is ballasted. It has a 160 pound bulb on the bottom of it. And then the mast is aluminum with Vectran rigging. The mast is far too heavy for the boat. It needs something a lot smaller. It's like smaller section and lighter. But the boat is still a blast to sail. It's a real handful when it's more than 15 knot, but it's a really, really good time. A couple little details about the origins of the boat. First, the, the B is done by my friend Brad, who I used to sail a lot with in Seattle. He's a really good graphic designer. We're hoping that he will do something for Duracell as well when it comes time to put a name on the boat or a graphic on the boat as well. The reason that the boat's called The Honey is because when I first decided to build this boat, I bought plans and, and at the time I was getting ready to do a Pacific crossing from Hawaii to back to Washington. And so I had all these plans with me during the trip and I really wanted to build a model of the boat. And so on the boat, we had these graham cracker boxes. And so I built a scale model of the boat and it ended up saying honey on the side of it because there was honey graham crackers. So um, yeah, that's why it's called the honey. We're gonna take it out for a rip this afternoon.
So yesterday, Somerset was here and he gave me a hand to laminate this entire area, the deck to the whole side to the transom. And it turned out excellent. This afternoon, my mom is gonna come over and we're going to do the port side now. And so we're getting a lot done here in the past few days. Do you ever get bored of lamination? Uh, I do not. In this case, I don't because I'm finally seeing something come to fruition that I've been dreaming about for a few years now. And so to see this doghouse and now a whole extension come to like become reality is really exciting for me. So, you know, and vacuum bagging is like as somebody commented recently, an addiction for me, which is 100 percent true. So, no, is a lot. The short answer is no. But I am moving on to other projects soon, and I am getting close to being done with the stern modification that we're doing. So we have a little challenge for you. We're gonna get more into this next week, but we are starting to add up all the weights that we've taken into and out of the boat. Now this does not include any anything other than structure. So all the electronics, the wiring, the plumbing, the machinery, all that stuff doesn't count. This is only the fiberglass that I've cut out of the boat and cut into the boat. I have cut out the old doghouse, the main bulkhead. I cut out the old cockpit. I cut out the pod that was around the nav station. And then I've added in a new doghouse, a new travel bulkhead new main bulkhead inside the boat, and we've done this stern modification back here as well. And so the challenge for you is to try and guess what the net difference in weight is so far. A couple caveats is that when I cut off the doghouse, the old doghouse, the windows are still in it, and that those are going to be accounted in, into the net difference. Also, the old cockpit we cut out and we have not replaced that with anything yet. Write in the comments what you think the net difference in weight is so far in the structure that we've uh, put into and taken out of the boat. And the person that gets the closest will give you a little shout out on the channel next week. Thank you so much again to all of our Patreons. We have a few more to thank this week, starting with Peter, who's in New Zealand. He sails the Flying 15, races the Flying 15. He is planning to do the World Championships next summer, or next, well, their next summer in Australia. Uh, the Flying 15 is one of the largest fleets and the oldest fleet of sport boats in the world. So good luck uh, to you and your crew, Peter. Thank you so much, Mike in Tennessee. Mike told us that he fell in love with sailing years ago when he learned to sail in a catamaran. And he also had some, uh, he reminded us that we're not only building a boat, but building memories that we will cherish for a lifetime, which is very true. So thank you so much, Mike. And thank you to Nick, who's also in New Zealand. He sent us a really cool picture of an, a remote controlled schooner. Uh, I think he races remote controlled sailboats out there in Lake Pegasus. Uh, he's been sailing his whole life and we really appreciate the support, Nick. And thank you so much to a few patrons who we did not hear back from. Thank you, Michael, Daniel, and Christian uh, for your support and we hope to hear from you. We did hear back from Rejean who signed up last week. He is from Ottawa and he is really into racing there on the river. And he's also a really talented 3D printing uh, as a hobby. Uh, he's really into that and he's building up all kinds of parts for his own boat. So. Thank you again, Réjean. If you'd like to join our Patreon community, you can head over to the Duracell Project on Patreon. You are the people who make this project possible. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. And see you next week.